Hi, this is Shadi and today I want to talk to you about um, close combat fighting, um, particularly with the weapons. There is just a lot uh, of opinions out there. There is a lot of stuff that works. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't work. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about particularly training against weapons for self-defense and not everything is suited for that particular purpose. Allow me to explain myself. When we talk about self-defense or anything that works with weapons, uh, a lot of the times the army is often brought up because, you know, it's the worst case scenario. It's war and thus if you train that particular methodology, it might help you. Uh, not only that, it will make uh, things far easier. But studying the particular scenarios, you would know that this is not the end all be all. In fact, it can be very much different. Um, the philosophy of the army most of the time it is rather you know the best defense is the best offense um, both of them are heavily armed and, and are highly trained in case you know they ended up in you know the trenches or the battlefield and they both pull out their weapons and they just you know one will tend to mount the other and basically kill them um, here's why this is not conducive to reality um, this is also very similar to a fencing match or a kendo match. You're both armed and you're also both very offensive. Um, first of all, if you, you know, you're carrying a sword or a French poignard, you know, the, the French dagger, etc., and you do a lot of damage, most likely you're the one that's gonna go to jail and, you know, you don't wanna be the victim and the defendant at the same time. Uh, also, most likely when you're walking down the street, 99% uh, of the people are not carrying anything with them. So it's going to be, you know, open hand versus one that is armed. Now, uh, here is from uh, a Aikido Sensei. The, the video is called uh, There's No Such Thing as a Knife Fight. And he shows multiple scenarios. This was the scenario after they were both holding a Sharpie and trying to stab each other. The moral of it, uh, it's a very long video, I suggest you go watch it, there's no such thing as knife fights. And when they were both holding a sharpie and trying to stab each other, is when they both took the most damage. Uh, when the other one was unarmed, they, they took lot less damage. So very similar to the Kimura story, when he was a child, another child attacked him with a knife, a lot of scrambled happened. And Kimura basically got his butt stabbed or sliced. I forgot the details, but uh, he got hold of that arm and he managed to injure the other kid with his own knife and was able to run after him. It's in my uh, Kimura knife fights video. And he was able to run after him up until he reached his house and the little kid hid in his house. Uh, father came out and said to him that, you know, my child is far more injured than you are and we called a doctor so please if you can leave that would be better obviously this is terrible parenting you don't send your child with a knife and your child your child should not assault other kids with a knife so but the moral of the story is kimura had both hands freed and thus there was more mobility and the the ability to grab and limit the attacks of the uh, the attacker so that's one good news about uh, self-defense being different than war or both of them being armed. Um, I would say this is far more close to reality. Like I said, 99% are not armed uh, in case you happen to be armed and you're both, you know, uh, stabbing, taking away and stabbing each other. You're going to take a lot of damage, first of all, because you have uh, a lot of your attention towards you yourself being offensive. And also, um, you know, you have a lot less mobility in that hand that's stabbing. You cannot grapple and sta stab very efficiently. Um, so obviously having both hands freed, I'm not saying you're not going to take any damage, obviously. But uh, here, like for example, uh, according to that video where one sparred with a knife and one without the, without the knife in the Aikido video, um, they took a lot less damage. So it is different than war. It is different than kendo. It is different than fencing. Um, in, in kendo, you know, just like you're striking, 
you're also wearing a very heavy armor you're protecting your face and you're wearing those very thick gloves because in kendo you have to strike either the head the wrists or the torso that's where you score an ippon so even though you are holding that uh, kendo sword you will take a lot damage uh so obviously it does not eliminate so saying that you know training in weapon based martial arts that's gonna translate well to self-defense that's not always the case um because again you're not both it's not gonna be like a duel and also uh most likely you're not you're not only gonna get hurt but also you can face legal issues now what to do uh training kata alone we all know this that it is not enough kata they hold value but not combatively but they hold value in terms of principles technique uh how to create angles or the right angle in order if you want to choose to grapple someone with a knife etc it is not you know made to make you too deadly or you know uh, too peaceful whatever the claim may be like if, uh, like i'll give you an example even fukuda jigoro kano's teacher uh, he believed in you know sparring a lot as a young man or a woman and once you reach a certain age of maturity both in life and technique then you commit your life to kata uh, in front of the president fukuda did kata while kano and his friend they did randori so uh, they know that kata alone is not the end all be all even kano himself after the age of 30 he committed his a lot of his time to randori uh, to i'm sorry kata and developing a lot of kata because there's a lot of lessons in them but they're not combat and they knew that um because obviously today with the age of the internet and people still believe that training kata like only you know like aikido or like even this matter here this manner you see here in front of you without sparring can be enough while in fact it is not so again what to do obviously uh, learning the principles of kata here in goshinjutsu and kimeno kata is obviously very beneficial but it is not enough um this is the I, i've trained judo and aikido and i know this is not enough so uh what to do sparring is essential in order to apply these principles against a non-compliant uh, partner obviously um and also you know test yourself J just like that t-shirt you know the as you progress you're gonna see a lot less damage and then you're gonna see no damage on vital areas like the inner forearm um your vital organs like your stomach you're gonna see probably on your uh, pectoral muscles a little bit of slices which would be fine you're gonna survive um also nothing on your neck um you know same thing you know your forehead because you know it will create a curtain of blood on your eyes etc so that's how you do it well one great martial art actually that does this is tomiki aikido particularly the weapons uh portion they do competitions uh you're against uh, an armed fighter and you try to disarm them take them to the ground etc so that's a great way if you want for example so if you think that you know kendo is a great way to you know defend not really you have your arms holding that sword and that's very limiting to yourself same thing with fencing even though you have one arm free but it's behind your back and it's very basically the same thing so and also training like the army you know again not the best it's great to grapple with open hands against someone again that's if you're um objective is self-defense but if you know maybe you like the art of kendo you like fencing you like um you know drawing the sword and doing iaido and slicing the the bamboo etc then please go ahead and do that but don't train an art uh for something that it does not provide i think that's the the whole point with you know fake martial arts or martial arts that doesn't work etc um uh if your objective is self-defense particularly you know, open hand and with weapon i think a mix of tomiki aikido and judo or pjj can be very good um or wrestling and tomiki aikido 
that's also can be very good and also you know master the principles of kata in judo like here you see not just for the sake of passing from third dan to fourth dan because goshin jutsu is i think for the second dan here in france going for the third dan so uh you know don't do it for the the um the formality of it but do it really try to see what it's trying to teach you and then of course sparring is inevitable in order to be efficient against an armed opponent again uh, not promising you're not going to take any damage but you know the less damage the better the non-vital places on your body etc so if you have anything else to add i'm sure a lot of you will have a lot to say this is something that's very controversial a lot of people have differing opinions but this is my take on it you know the war or both people are armed is not self-defense you know street self-defense uh in fact it's it can be a lot better if you have your both hands freed sometimes or you know i don't know where you live or having a superior weapon like you draw uh, a firearm and they they're like hey, hey hey man i'm just let's just just talk and then they take off running as long as you don't shoot and you know you have a license for the gun then i guess that's fine i don't know but uh this is mainly it uh if you have anything else to add i mean we are here you can always reach me and send me a message this was shady and thank you for listening